Hello and welcome to Apex Instant Tips, episode 143, brought to you most Fridays at 12.05 Eastern Time. We are your hosts, I'm Marwa, and today I have with me Egle. Hi, Egle. Hi, guys. Thank you for having me, Marwa. Thank you. Thank you for joining me today. So let's let's talk about a little tip that we have today. Hope it, I hope it will be useful for our uh, people joining us. So I'm going to share my screen quickly. And then, um, yeah, so I have created an Apex page and with an interactive grid with a list of tasks and a checkbox to indicate if these tasks are completed or not. I'm going to kick my kick off my timer, not kick it. Okay, so um, as you as you may notice here, we have a message to uh, alert the user and tell the user if there are uncompleted tasks. For example, if I uncheck two tasks, click on save, the message would change. You have two tasks to do with the background color red and the color yellow. And so there must be some CSS that is applied to this item. Let's check it in the page designer. This is the item. And as you can see here in the advanced attribute, we have a CSS class. But if you take a look at the inline CSS attribute at the page level, it's empty, it's clean. So where did we create the definition of that CSS? I actually did that, <coughs> sorry, in the pre-rendering process here inside this PLSQL code. At first, I counted the uncompleted tasks from my table. And based on the count, I defined the message and the CSS class. At the end, I added the message to the item, and then I added that def CSS definition into my page. Using this procedure, we pick CSS add. So that's why each time we have a different CSS applied to item based on the number of tasks that are completed or not. Now, the same thing could be done for JavaScript from within our process. If, for example, I would like to display uh, an alert, execute a JavaScript code to display an alert to the user saying how many tasks that are not yet completed. I will get back to my process and I will include this code. The first code is to add, the first procedure would add inline code and the second one would execute it. I will run the page and you will notice that there is this JavaScript alert that is executed. Another, another option to do this would be in the in the event on, on page load, for example, creating a dynamic action in there. Oh, yes. Yes, Igli, you're totally right. So that's an approach is to create a dynamic action here. And for example, um, choose the alert action type yeah. in your message and then i think you can condition this using the server side condition based on That's the number with the of count of uh, task completed yes that's that's true but um that's one approach this approach would allow you to construct the javascript code from within your PL system and that way you can use values from your data, your select, your computation calculations, and construct your JavaScript function and then add it on load. That's, I found it a benefit. Now, I can comment this part so that I won't execute it on loading the page and just keep the add inline code procedure. Okay. I'm going to stop the timer for a second because I must have somewhere, okay, an error. Mm, I need to stop the timer quickly, sorry. This is happening sometimes and I need to um, delete cookies. I have not investigated that yet to see why is that happening, but Okay. 
Okay, so now what I was trying to do is remember that we had an alert that is that is executed when loading the page, this one. My point here is that I'm going only to use the procedure add inline code. And I won't invoke that by the, uh, in the second procedure. So in my process, I will only include this add inline code. I will command this procedure. And let's see, the alert will disappear. It doesn't show anymore. But if I call on this button, we have the alert. And that's because in this button, I created dynamic action and it executes that JavaScript function that we added throughout our full process, show alert here in our project. That's the tip. I hope it's useful. We can separate this whole PLSQL code and put it into a package or a procedure and keep it in the database and keep our page like clean. And it will be, I think, sometimes helpful in when doing uh, fixes or maintenance or like. Yeah, and I can think of, of a ton of possibilities with this kind of uh, solution. There are a ton of uh, ways we can apply it for certain. Yes, and remember, Agley, once we worked with a customer that uh, one of the customer requests is, even though there is a list here and an interactive grid, we can use the total or the break or the highlights of the grid, but the customer insisted to have an Apex item that would display a message uh, as an alert to the user. And that's where we can use this tip. Yeah, and when we have like a very complex code in PLCQL and we want to affect the 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 page, yeah, exactly. that would be really, really useful. Yes. So um, thank you, Egle, for being with us, with me today. Thank you very much, Marwa. Thank you. And don't forget to subscribe, sh share, and like the video. And hopefully see you next week. Bye. Bye.